While doing research for today's beer style, I consulted all of my books, including the Scratch and Sniff Guide to Beer. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Ching the Brew. Today I will be drinking Pike Brewing's Kilt Lifter, a Scotch ale by Pike Brewing out of Seattle. You know, Pike's Market and all that stuff. Anyways, let's put the can there and let's talk about the books briefly. So, Kilt Lifters. I've heard various beers referred to as Kilt Lifters. Uh, kilt Lifter is a um, colloquialism for Scotch ales. And yes, I actually do have a book called The Scratch and Sniff Guide to Beer, because why not? And it has a decent summary, but I won't start with that. Um, first off, oh, I got beer in my books. <laughs> um, first off is from Drinkology's Beer, which is one of the first books I got about beer, and is a very nice reference, actually. It's small, you know, like those uh, abridged children's classics books. I think that's what made me like it to begin with. Um... And it notes that Scottish and Scotch ale are two different styles, well, kind of, sort of, both originating in Scotland, that they are malty beers rather than hoppy beers. They are pale ales. Yes, that is a pale ale color there. I mean, they have a lot more of it. Good book, though. Highly recommend if you're looking to learn more about beer. Um, and then in the uh, Scratch and Sniff Beer Guide, a beer lover's companion by Justin Kennedy, uh, they describe a Scotch ale as a native to Edinburgh. This malty, boozy beer is dark reddish in color with hints of toffee, caramel, and dried fruit. Indeed. And then the Bernstein's The Complete Beer Course. I believe this is the second edition, or this might be the first edition. I know he has a new edition either out now or soon to be out. Um, and because this book, it, this is an excellent book. Excellent book. Um, this book has a lot of examples of beers to try as you explore the styles. And so having, uh, and so it is kind of time bound because breweries come and go, especially in the, the micro and, and craft beer movement. There's a lot of change, especially right now, tons of change. And so it's entirely possible that a significant number of the breweries mentioned as, hey, here's a brewery you should try as a great example of this style, might be defunct in the next year or two, or already. Um, that's not the case for all the beers. He deals with a wide variety, with a pretty exhaustive list of beer styles, and many of those are historic beer styles that have been made by breweries that are hundreds of years old. So those aren't going away, but he also gives examples of micro and regional craft brews that approximate or or iconify iconify sure let's make that a word um the style and those very well may be you know gone with the wind anyways his description on scotch ale the scotch ale's roots reach back to the 19th century when brewers in edinburgh were producing strong pale ales that were the equivalent of england's dark swedish burton ales which I believe are um, English-style barley wines primarily today. Um, historically, brewers in Scotland did not make their beer smoky by design, but sometimes you'll find smoke in Scot Scotch ales, um, American-made Scotch ales these days, because smokiness can be a really nice counterpoint to the sweet, heavy uh, notes found in Scotch ales. Regardless, um, Scotch ales, they're also known as wee heavies, and a few other um, names, kilt lifters and the like. I do believe this is the first Scotch ale that I have tried on the channel. I'm pretty darn sure. I don't drink too many of these. While I do prefer malty, malty, not necessarily sweeter, but maltier beers, or I have in the past, the first Scotch ales I tried were just a bridge too far. They were super strong, super heavy, and I didn't really appreciate them quite so much. Nowadays, um, well, I appreciate strong beers. I enjoyed the last barley wine that I drank from Ferment. That was truly an excellent and delicious beer. And so I anticipate that as a style, I will be less affronted by a Scotch ale. And one more note before I get into this. Um, actually, two more notes. First off, 
this beer is thanks to the uh, lovely and gracious Marie, um, a good friend. So thank you, Marie. This one goes to you. I doubt you're watching it because you are not a beer person, but um, you, uh, well, I haven't drunk the beer yet, so I'm not going to say you made a great choice, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And secondly, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. The stuff you normally do for YouTube channels that you like. Um, it tells the YouTube algorithm that my content's good and we're sharing with others and it helps you see more of it when it happens. So do that, please. Thank you. Anyways, let's dive in, see what this is like. Hmm. Interestingly fruity notes. This is relatively fresh out of the refrigerator. It's been out maybe, well, about the time it's taken to set this up. So maybe 10 minutes. And it's not just, it's not just apple juice. There's like pear. Oh, there's also, so despite being a, um, uh, being a, a paler malt, this is, this is not a pale malt. This is a paler malt. Um, it's red or brown, but it's to the light side of that. Definitely. This is, this would be light for an amber ale. Um, there is a distinct, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's a, a roasty note to this um, as well, which would I, I would expect to come from a, a darker malt. So that's interesting smelling it coming from this. Very little hop, which is true to the style, though being a, um, being an American and particularly a Northwest interpretation of this style, I would expect some hoppiness. Uh, just, you know, staying true to the regionality, right? <laughs> if there are hops, they're probably earthier hops rather than the vibrant, verdant, um, you know, citrus kind of hops or, or pine tree hops. That's interesting. So the pear, or the kind of the fruity pear-like note, um, it's very subtle, very faint, and instead there's it, it 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 reminds me of like like dirt fields in the late winter in Northern California in a, a temperate area where they're moist. There's kind of fog over the ground. Very evocative pictures here. Um, not really smelling like you know cow manure, just more smelling like like prepared earth. And it makes me wonder if if they've integrated some smokiness into this. Now the other uh, Scotch ales that I've had have not had any smoky character to speak of. And, but I'm just wondering if, if there's a smokiness in here and that might be kind of that earthy, um, prepared earth kind of smell. Hmm, that's interesting. Recently, I've tried just to help me pick up additional nuance from the nose, um, like exhaling into the glass and then inhaling. I suppose that might have the effect of taking what's in my lungs and what I've been eating recently and putting it in the glass and then pulling it out. Um, I don't know, but it, it does seem to bring out some, uh, some slightly different nuances. So if you see the glass fogging up, fogging up, that's what's happening. It's 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 a professional move. <laughs> oh, let's just drink it already. Hmm. Smoke, grape, interesting. Um, Some other, you know, kind of a juicy, like like fruit, fruity. Um, I can see the pear still there. Like it's not apple; it's it's apple adjacent. Um, definitely the smoke, though. Oh, 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 interesting. There's a few different things going on here. So initially, there is a smokiness in the mouth. 
And then there's kind of this this sweetness, this this fruity sweetness that that might be the pear. And in some ways, it like screams like not grape juice, but like table grapes. You know, you're, you're eating grapes, not Concord grape juice, whatever, not Welch's. Um, and then I'm gonna guess that's a hoppiness, a, a hop finish, but it kind of reads smoke. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to say that that is not true to style, that it is true to region. Uh, it is a, a sharp hoppiness or a sharp, um, I don't want to say acidic. It's a sharp, uh, like a, an herbal bite, um, like, like some sort of dried herb. <sighs> I'm trying to think of one that would, like oregano or something like that, oregano. Um, that's kind of the, the entire finish. What is that fruit? What is that fruit? It might just be the combination of like pear and grape, probably. It is, there's a lot going on. Um, I'm not going to go so far as to say that it's complex. So much as to say that there are, like, at least three very distinct characters to this beer. And they kind of overlap a little. There, there's a start, and then there's just kind of this long middle, and then there's this finish that just goes, goes, goes. Um, and and each one of them is relatively simple. And all together, they make for an interesting beer. Um I would think that as it warms, the sweetness, the big sweet middle might grow a bit. And I think that would probably be a good thing in this beer. Hmm. Yeah, sipped and like held in your mouth, that's, that's quite pleasant. So it's not, it's not super heavy like other Scotch ales I've had. Um, I think the, the inclusion of this, this herbal bite, I, I'm presuming hops, is a, is a welcome thing to breaking up the heaviness of the beer. And so as you're drinking it, if you're just, if you're holding it in your mouth, it's really nice. It gives, it gives your tongue something besides the sweetness. They're, they're not battling. They're just both there. And so you can taste them distinctly, but they're they're separate enough that you can taste them individually on their own. Like w once you're done with that big sweet middle, and you're left with just the finish, it's it's like a you probably had a really bracing West Coast IPA um, a minute ago. <laughs> you know, you you finish with that whole mouth uh, pine tree brush, and now you've just got that that bit riding down your tongue and down into your throat. You have that kind of piney um or, or herbal uh finish b bitter finish and and you're just left with that and that's that's a really pleasant thing on a west coast ipa i would guess that um people who aren't ipa fans who like scotch ales might find this less to their liking because of that but it seems like you know given that this is a seattle pacific northwest brewery using seattle pacific northwest uh you know beer brewing mentalities it's an appropriate choice you know for what it's worth this is a tasty beer with the hoppiness i'm not sure that it would work well paired with um say you know smoking cigars or pipes or something like that um, I generally would think of a, a beer like this of being something done well with, you know, those other relaxing um, uh, pastimes where the, the sweetness and heaviness of the beer can help, you know, cut through the, the earthiness or the, or the vegetable um, grassiness of the, the smoke of the cigar or the pipe. Um, but I think that the, the inclusion of the hops means that this is probably off the table for that sort of thing, unless you like to smoke with your, you know, with your IPAs. Have at it, you know. 
do your thing. Um, but drunk by itself, I think this works pretty well. I'm not sure. I suppose, you know what? It would probably go very nicely with a cheesed platter and probably with sharper cheeses. Um, yeah. Yeah, like a good, like an aged cheddar. I think this would actually go very nicely with or even an herbed uh, cheese of some sort. That would probably work quite nicely, actually, come to think of it. Yeah. I think that creamy, the creaminess and the, you know, that's exactly it. The creaminess and the cheese would balance very nicely with that finishing bitterness. Whereas just, I mean, the sweetness of the body of the beer, that, that always goes well with cheese. Cheese loves sweet things. And, and they, like, you'd kind of have two points of this beer, like, coinciding very nicely with a good dry, sharp cheddar kind of sort of thing. Anyways, that's my take. What's yours? Yeah. Feedback, comment, tell me. Do you like your scotch ales? Um, engagement, right? Engagement, yay! It's all about the algorithm, engagement. <laughs> Anyways, this is me trying to drive engagement, drinking and enjoying Pike Brewing Company's Kilt Lifter Scotch Ale. I will catch y'all on the flip side.